The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Wall, and yes, that is my actual name. Today, on this beautiful sunny day, we're going to show you how to build a farm. My family has always been farmers since the days of my father and his father before him. In fact, all of this land you see before you was actually won in a game of cards against the Monroe clan. Proven several things, including Monroes don't know how to play cards, and they don't know how to count. They even wagered away their finest trousers, which have been passed down as a family heirloom, and I still wear to this very day. And on the farm, E-I-E-I-O, there's many different things that you can grow and harvest, such as fruits and vegetables, cattle, organs. Possibilities are endless. I'd like to invite you into my world and share a little bit more of it with you. So far, these are the fruits of my labor. I've put a lot of time in and will show you how to make a farm of your own. It's a humble life. Some would say the salt of the earth. Looks like the crops are coming in nicely, and I will be able to feed my family for quite some time. Now farming's not for everyone. It's a hard life sometimes, but someone's got to do it. And it can be rewarding, just look at me. I have a very rich life, with a beautiful wife, my sister cousin Gertrude. I can count the potato. Yes, you can, dear. Now go back into your cage. I picked you a flower! Indeed. Now I do confess that I don't understand all the technical jargon that goes into architecture, so we've asked our cousin, Mr. Mr. War, to help us out. He ain't no pure blood like us. No, but he's still family. Right, after that deliverance-inspired intro, uh, let's just jump into this. So the sheet of styrofoam is half an inch thick, and I've cut these little slabs that are four and a half inches long by three inches wide. That'll be the base template for the structure. The side walls are going to be three inches long by two inches tall. And I'm going to cut those out of the styrofoam board here. Make sure that both of my sides are even here, like so. And we now have the side pieces. The front and back wall, respectively, will be three and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide. Once I have that done, I'm going to mark it off with a thin line at exactly two inches in height, which will match what the side panels will be. Then, taking the ruler, I'm going to draw a line from the very top in the very middle and triangulate it and slice off these side panels, which is going to give us the slopes of the roof. Like so. I'm sure you've probably made something like this in elementary school. We're basically just building a generic cardboard home. Actually, I'm not allowed to play with glue no more because I kept sticking it up my nose because it smells nice and then I sneezed it all over the craft table and now my boogers are shiny. Wait, that literally just happened this morning. You're telling me you're still in elementary school? That's right. It shows. Oh, thank you. All right, we're gonna start mounting all the pieces together. I'm gonna to use the hot glue gun to fuse the sidewall with the front panel. Now you can use white glue if you want to have a little bit more control. I just find it takes forever to dry. So we'll go with old trusty here. I actually like the taste of white glue a little bit better. You can still taste a horse in there. I can imagine. It's mighty good. All right, we'll take the uh, fully formed box now and mount it into place. Nothing really complex there. And our foundation's done. From there, we can take our coffee stir sticks and start breaking them off to do the frames on the edge of the building. So, uh, if you need the measurements again, the wall pieces should be about two inches in height, and it's gonna be about three inches in length. Now, you have a lot of freedom right now of what kind of a framing you want to do. I'm gonna keep mine relatively straightforward here. Now, most of the buildings that I'm working on will have the wooden panels along the very, very edge. And in the dead center here, I'm gonna put one support beam. Some of the other ones I left blank, they might have a window instead. That way none of the buildings need to look identical. This one though is gonna have a little bit more fancy stuff in it. I'm gonna break off the stir stick so that it's at an angle, giving us a really nice looking architecture piece. Now, just be mindful of your measurements when you're doing this, especially when you try to mirror it on the other side. That way you have a nice consistent look and it really ties the whole building together. 
With that first panel out of the way, we're going to start working on the front of the building. I'm going to glue a large support beam at exactly 2 inches that we previously had marked off. Get rid of the excess here. And then I'm going to take the boards and start framing the front piece. Just mark it off with my pen. And I'll snap it as clean as I can and it should just slot in there without any hassle. Now you can be as fancy as you want with your framing if you want to do some more detail work, make it look a little more Victorian. Mine I'll keep relatively rustic, just the side pieces and then one going from the very top into the wooden support beam. Like so. Quick, easy, and relatively clean. Once that's out of the way, I'm going to start working on the windows and the doors. For this one, I'm going to snap them off at about one inch in height. And about three wide should take care of it. Once I have that out of the way, I'll take another piece and slice it as clean as I can in half. That will be the framing for the window panel. Just be really careful when you're doing this, especially with uh, that small of an item. All right, I'm going to reassemble it here to make sure that it's nice and flat and even. And then holding it in place, I will apply the hot glue and start mounting these panel pieces. A little bit tricky to see it at this angle, but I think you'll get the gist of what I'm going for here. I only need the one window for my structure, so I'm done. But if you've got multiples, I'd probably bang them out in one batch. Once that's out of the way, we can mount it firmly in place with a hot glue gun. And voila. I'm really liking how this is coming together, actually. All right, now we're going to do the exact same thing with the front door. Now, depending how big your structure is, these are probably going to be about four, maybe five wide, or maybe, if it's a larger structure, maybe six coffee or six thick. Yeah, say that five times fast. I ain't allowed to go fast no more, especially with scissors. That's not relevant at all to what I just said, but also good advice. Good job. Uh, I'm going to slice these planks in half, actually, just to make it look a little bit more interesting for the front door. And once that's out of the way, I'm then going to make sure it's nice and even here. Uh, apply a thin layer of super glue and then put a beam at the bottom and the top of the door, respectively. Just like we did with the window panels. One of the differences, though, is I want to make it look a little bit more intricate. So once I've got the top and the bottom piece mounted in place, I'm then going to run a diagonal piece of lumber from the top to the bottom. I'll cut the plank in half just so it's a little bit thinner and it will match the aesthetics, and I'll glue that firmly in place. And it just gives a kind of cool look to the door. Once that's out of the way, we're going to start mounting it in place. Now, I noticed I had a couple splinters hanging out the bottom here, so I'm going to trim those away neatly and then bolt it in place with the hot glue gun once again. Once I have that done, I'm going to start working on a frame that's going to go along the edge of the door. and It'll just really make this whole thing pop out. For the frame, you want to make it exactly the same height as the door itself. And once you have both sides bolted firmly in place, in um, this case I'm using the super glue just to give it a nice firm bond, I'll then run a thin piece between the two panels over top of the door. Now, I'll be the first to admit, this is a very simple way of doing a door. There's nothing really fancy about it, but it has that sort of rustic charm to it. And I quite like doing these styles. And there you have it. That's the frame of our structure. Now it's time to move on to the roof. Now for this one, the measurements are going to be four and a quarter in length by two and a half in width. And this will fit quite nicely with this building. Once we have the pieces, we're just going to glue them firmly in place to the frame using the hog glue gun once again. Just get rid of any of those uh, plastic spider webs that comes out of the glue gun. And then we'll bolt the second piece as well. And this is going to give us the foundation to work on our roof. Like so. However, before we get to the roof, I want to finish off the foundations. So what I'm going to do is mark it halfway between the styrofoam. So in this case, it'll be a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to draw a thin line between the two. That way we are going to have basically two layers of brick for the foundation of this house. Once I have that out of the way, I'm going to go back in and carefully pen in some lines and literally draw each of the bricks in. If you want to see a different technique for this, you can check out my ruins or the dungeon tile episodes shown above. In this case, I'm just being as precise as I can and doodling them out. And you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. All right, now we got to work on the part that, well, takes the longest. We gotta do the roof tiles. What I'm gonna do is cut out a thin strip here that is about, uh, I'd say about half an inch in thickness and then maybe 0.7 inch in width. 
once I have a ton of these guys, it's time to start gluing them in place. Now, I apologize, it's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing here since it's basically just gluing tan tiles onto a tan background, but I think you'll get the gist of what I'm doing. Once the first layer's down, I'm then going to alternate the tiles and start building it up. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that most of us have seen roof tiles at one point or another, so I'm basically just going to fast forward here. Uh, this process, like I said, does take a little bit of time. So, uh, speed boost! Ah, there we go. All the tiles are out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is glue a thin strip of cardboard to the very top, and this will just sort of hide all the imperfections on the end cap. And gives it a nice, clean finish like so. And there you have it, folks. Our structure is completely finished. With the house out of the way, we're now going to move on to some accessories, starting with some fences. For this one, I'm going to cut a strip that is a half inch by half inch in height and width, and it'll be in various lengths to make L shapes. Once I have this foundation, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the house, and divide it as clean as I can in half. This will give us, again, two bricks thick. You know, my daddy oasted that I was two bricks short of oatmeal. What does that even mean? I don't really know, but my daddy's the smartest man in the whole school. Oh, uh, is your dad a teacher or something? <laughs> no, silly, we're in the same grade. That explains a lot. This is why I avoid family reunions. Once all the brickwork is done, we're going to start working on the fence itself. For this one, the length will, well, that's going to be dealer's choice, however long you made the foundation. Uh, you'll take your coffee stir sticks and you're going to cut them as clean as you can in half to make it a nice thin plank. You'll need about three or four of these guys and then you'll need a couple extras that are one inch in height. These as well you will cut in half. What you're going to do is you're going to mount these probably in the corner, the end cap, and then maybe one in the very middle of that long L shaft. And you're going to want to use the hot glue gun for this. Unfortunately, the crazy glue or super glue, that will dissolve the styrofoam. White glue is fine, obviously, but, you know, you don't need that much time to manipulate this, so don't be afraid to use the hot glue gun. Once the posts are firmly in place, we're going to take the long panel and mount the first one about halfway through that peg, like so. And then the second one will be almost at the very tip, so just a little bit of those wooden posts will be poking right above it like that. For the side ones, it's basically going to be the exact same thing, except it'll be just below where the other ones are mounted. With all the panels connected, it'll give it a lot of durability to this otherwise flimsy piece. But when it's all said and done, this is what the final product is going to look like. Next up, we're going to start working on the crops. For this one, I'm going to make it roughly one and a half inches wide, or about the width of my ruler, and make it about 5 inches in length, which should give us a good plot of land. Once I have that base cut out, I'm going to take some coffee stir sticks here, and start breaking them so that I can make a frame around the edges. All the pieces will be firmly bolted in place with the hot glue gun, of course, to give a nice strong bond, and once it's all done, you're going to have a frame that looks a little something like this. For the next step, we're going to take a half inch by half inch styrofoam block and carefully cut off a thin strip, which we're going to glue to the middle of the crop bed. But before we do that, we're going to carefully shave off a bit of the edges and round them out to give the impression of a mound of earth that the crops have been planted into. Just make sure that your blade is nice and sharp to avoid any headaches and tearage. And once the entire piece is to your satisfaction, we're just going to mount it in place with a hot glue gun. And then you'll have something that looks like this. For the next step, we're going to take some white glue and rub it all over the styrofoam pieces, trying not to get onto the wooden frame, but if you do, don't worry about it, we'll just brush it off later. Once you've got your whole coat on there, we're going to take some sand and sprinkle it across the entire surface. And that's pretty much it for construction. Now we just got to paint the thing and then we'll plant the crops afterwards. With all the construction done, it's now time to get into the painting segment. First off, we're going to take some generic black acrylic paint and use it as a primer for all of the pieces. So make sure you get it in there nice and thick and give it plenty of time to dry before moving on to the next steps. First up, we're going to take three parts black and one part white to make a dark gray color. And then we're going to dry brush this across most of the surfaces. 
I'm going to do my best to avoid the uh, the timber frame as much as I can, but if you do get some pain on there, don't worry about it too much. We'll be going back over this later on, and we can clean it up if needed. But for now, just try to do as clean of a dry brush as you can across pretty much every other surface. You'll get something like this. Next up, we're going to take one part black and one part white to make a medium gray color. And this, we're going to lightly dry brush across the pre-existing gray areas. Again, doing my best to avoid the timber frames. Uh, as I mentioned before, there is an episode called Ruins, and that has a full detail on all this. I'm pretty much just retreading old ground, but for any newcomers, hopefully this will help you. And this is what our second layer is going to look like. Continuing on, we're going to take three parts white and one part black to make a light gray color. And we're just going to keep dry brushing across those same areas. But just like the color is getting progressively lighter and lighter, so too are my brush strokes until I'm doing just basically a light dusting across this surface. And that is what our next layer is going to look like. Next up, we're going to take just pure white and lightly dry brush it across all the surfaces. At this point, there's hardly any paint left in my bristles. Now, the keen eye of you might have noticed something. This whole time, I've been doing a sneaky technique. Every layer has been gradually been moving further and further away from the timber frames. So when I did the darker gray color, it went pretty much all the way to the edge. But now this pure white is more or less in the center and hardly goes near it. And this has led to a gradual shadowing effect. It's tricky in small places like this, but if you practice enough, it can be well worth the effort. Next up, we're going to work on all of the wooden areas. To do this, we're going to take one part black and one part brown to make a dark chocolate color, and we'll apply it as evenly as we can across the beams. Now, if you do happen to get it on the other surfaces, don't worry about it too much. You can always dilute it down with some water and quickly mop it up. Although, in some areas, I might actually dry brush a little bit of brown on there, uh, just to give a sort of a decrepit and decaying look. Might actually uh, really tie the whole thing together. Now, I'm also going to do the exact same colors with this back window. I'll do the same on the door frame, etc. Just any part here that is going to have a wooden element. Next up, we're going to take some generic brown colors and start dry brushing it over all the wooden elements that we previously painted. However, if you would like some alternative takes of how to do wooden elements, check out a previous video called Painting Wooden Panels. In that one, I do three different techniques. A very fast one, a standard one, and then a photorealistic of weather-worn effects, which I quite like. But for this one, I'm trying to do an entire village basically over a weekend, so I'll probably go with something a little bit easier to pull off. Now I'm going to do the roof panels the exact same technique. It's the start with the black primer, dark chocolate brown highlighting it with the brown there and I'm doing the exact same technique here with the fence. Pretty much all the wooden elements are going to get the same treatment. You know it's nothing really complicated and if you want to add some more elements to it then by all means knock yourself out. But for me in this one it's going to be simple. And here we go on to the crops. For this one exact same technique, black, a little bit of dark chocolate on there and then I'm going to dry brush it afterwards with some generic brown. And you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. I wasn't really satisfied with how the brown was turning out, so I decided I'm going to do a third coat. You can notice it here, especially on the tiles. And I'll do a light dry brushing across all the beams. You can notice how this is just popping out. It's really tying the whole piece together. So I'll do the same for the roof tiles, on the beams here, the back window, the front door. And I'm probably going to do the exact same thing on the fence. And I'll probably do another coat on the garden just to be safe. When it's all dried, it's going to look a little bit something like this. So far, I'm really liking how this is turning out. I'm probably going to do a lighter dry brush on top to really make the elements pop. Next up, we're going to take one part brown and one part white to make a lighter brown color, and we'll dry brush that across all of the wooden areas. I'll do my best to not get it on the other areas, but if I do, it's not too big of a deal. Like I said, just dilute it with some water and quickly try to clean it up. Now, for this one, I'm going to do a little bit more on the front door and the back window, respectively, since those are kind of a focal point 
even though this is a simple model and doesn't really have a lot of elements, that's the one area that I sort of want to pop out. So it might get two coats of this just to really bring the whole piece together. Like so. And I'll get something that looks a little bit like this. Huzzah. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the exact same technique on the fence post, and I'm going to do the same with this vegetable patch. Except this one, we'll probably get two coats, just to make sure. Next up, I'm going to go in with some pure white and lightly, very lightly dry brush it across all of the wooden elements. At this point, there's hardly any paint left in my bristles. And this is going to go across all of the wooden areas, and it's really going to make the grains in that natural wood just stand out. I'm going to do a little more with the window and a little bit more on the front door, probably two coats, and you'll get something that looks like this. And of course, we'll use the exact same technique with the fence post, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the crops here. Just a nice light dusting of the white across all the surface, and it should be good to go. And right after that, we can start getting into the planting of the crops. For this one, I'm going to take some white glue and put little droplets evenly spaced across the piece. Now, how much space you need is going to depend on how large of the plants are. For me, I'm going to use these little pieces from a company called Army Painter. And these ones look like little bushels of grass, and they've got little flowers on them, so it looks like kind of a neat little crop. And so this one I'm just going to put right on those little droplets of glue, and it's going to actually look kind of cool. You're going to get an effect that looks a little bit like this. Here, I'll use my one that's already dried. And there you have it. Some simple crops for our humble farm. Now let's have a look at the entire collection. Besides the crops that we just showed, we of course have our fences. And I was able to crank out about six or seven of these in a relatively short period of time. Now as for the main building itself, this is also a relatively quick and easy build. And because it's such a simple design, you can take this template and convert it into an assortment of different styles. So here's my blacksmith, and if I was feeling adventurous, I could even put a second one down as a stable. Now I also can expand the size. You can see here I took the exact same thing and made a very large structure. Oh, that looks like the church that dad goes to and dresses up like a ghost. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Let's roll the film before the police arrive. And I roll all alone. Every day I rise in the morning, gotta go and plant some seeds. That's not a metaphor for my sexual performance. Gotta go and milk my cow again, that's not a metaphor It sure is lonely on the farm, no women here for miles My hands are dirty and they're rough That's a good morning workout, why does everything I say sound like an innuendo? And I roll all Well, that has been today's episode. We hope that you found it extremely exciting. Like glue! If you did, make sure you hit the like, the share, and subscribe button down below. Remember to tell the interwebs we did good! And tell your sister, and your mom, and your mom's sister, and your cousins, and your other cousins, and your brother's cousins, and the neighbors, and the neighbor's dog, and the cow, and the meemaws. Don't forget the meemaws. They cannot forget the meemaws. And if you did enjoy it, and you want more, let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see us build. Oh, oh! Send us a mailman pigeon. <laughs> and we'd also like to thank our cousin, Mr. Mr. War, for helping. Even if he's not a pure blood. Every day I rise in the morning, gotta go and plant some seeds. That's not a metaphor for my sexual performance. Gotta go and milk my cow again, that's not a metaphor. It sure is lonely on the farm, no women here for miles. My hands are dirty and they're rough. That's a good morning workout. Why does everything I say sound like an innuendo? And I roll.